Hello! Right, we're here again in front of the sofa, and I've just had another trip to Poundland, surprisingly enough. Now we've got a new one from our good friends at SignalX. This is one of their USB dongles that they're selling, and it's a bit of tat. Let's see what it's like. Well, what can you say about this? Um, you put it into your computer, and it, uh, it does Bluetoothy things and stuff through the air and things. Ooh. Actually, that doesn't really work, does it? I think I'll stick with my regular format. If you're anything like me, you've had one of these sitting on your shelf for a while and you're not quite sure what to do with it, well I'm here to show you what to do. I'm Mr. Vestech and I'm your Raspberry Pi ally. Hey guys! Welcome to the long-awaited episode 3 of Raspberry Pi Ally. I'm Mr. Vestech and I'm your Raspberry Pi Ally. Now, first of all, apologies. My sincerest of apologies. I know in the last video I promised you guys that uh, this would be kind of a bi-weekly uh, release kind of schedule thing. Um, that didn't really go according to plan for a number of reasons. I think it's best if I just show you these pictures. Yeah, so the laptop that I was using for editing these videos is now in about six different pieces. Um, but I have managed to get a loan of some new equipment, so that should help for now. And, uh, it's actually a lot faster and a lot better than the other equipment that I had, so... Uh. Now, episode three is going to be our final episode in setting up RetroPie and getting it working so that you can enjoy all of your retro games. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to try and get everything up and running with the RetroPie with your various different game controllers. So, we're going to have a PlayStation 3 controller, a Wii remote, or controller, or Wiimote, whatever you want to call it, and an Xbox 360 controller. Now this isn't, um, this is a third party Xbox 360 controller because I, I don't actually have any wired equivalents handy usually um, it is a lot easier to set it up with the cable the principle is the same for setting it up with the Xbox 360 wireless receiver so you don't need to worry about that the only reason I'm not doing that now is because my wireless receiver is in my arcade unit just a quick tip for you by the way um, the best place that I found to buy a USB Bluetooth dongle believe it or not is Poundland if you're in the UK or Deals in Ireland it's one euro forty nine in Ireland, and I presume it's pound in Poundland. I, I would assume so. Uh, it's by Action's favourite brand, Signal X. That kind of explains my kind of weird intro at the start of the video. If you're not familiar with uh, Action's work, I'll put a link to a lot of stuff uh, here. You got to check out that channel, Ashens. He, he does reviews of kind of tat, basically. But this, to me, um, although he may describe it as tat, it actually works rather well. Um, it's Pretty much 100% compatible with the Raspberry Pi, as far as I can tell. Um, I'm no expert, but as far as I can tell, it works fine. It, it works with the PlayStation 3 controller, it works with the Wii controller. It is a fantastic, cheap buy, and it is a great addition to your Raspberry Pi. So, without further ado, you want to get your game on, let's get started! Okay, we're going to start with one of the easiest of the controllers, that's the PlayStation 3 controller. I say it's the easiest because RetroPie actually comes with a script built in that pretty much does everything we need. It downloads the Bluetooth drivers, it downloads the PlayStation 3 drivers, and it helps you to set it up. Right, so, we're in the RetroPie-setup folder. You should be familiar with this if you've seen the last couple of videos. Um, so I'm just going to do a quick LS here just so you can see the directory list. The program that we want to start is the program that we, well, we've pretty much been starting the entire time. Um, it's the RetroPie underscore setup.sh file. So in order to set that up yet again, we do sudo then dot forward slash RetroPie underscore setup.sh. This will look a little bit different on your TV screen as I'm using a remote connection into the Raspberry Pi in order to be able to show you this without having to film my TV um, because that doesn't look very good. Okay, so we want to scroll down to setup, press enter. 
and then we want to scroll down you can't see the option yet you but you want to keep scrolling keep pressing down and uh, number 16 there you'll see install driver and tools for ps3 controllers okay so before we select this option here um, it might be a good idea at this point to get out a, a powered usb hub if you have one i find certain devices don't like being connected via a non-powered usb hub although i suppose it depends on what power supply you have but things like uh, Wi-Fi adapters and other Bluetooth adapters, I've had issues with them in the past. So just bear that in mind. At the moment, I have the PS3 controller and the Bluetooth directly connected to a powered USB hub. And this should work fine. So we're going to select option 16. And that's just going to basically download stuff and do its thing. This takes a little bit of time. So we're going to fast forward through this. Okay, so after some time you will receive a prompt that asks you to make sure that the Bluetooth dongle is connected to the Raspberry Pi and press enter. It's uh, pretty straightforward, you just need to do exactly what it's telling you to do. You just press enter and you can see it there, it's downloading a tool that will help you to pair the PlayStation 3 controller to the Raspberry Pi. Now it's saying please connect the PS3 controller via a USB cable and press enter. Hopefully we have done that already. But I did find something kind of quirky though. Um, although it says connect the PS3 controller, uh, you won't get any lights or anything on the PS3 controller, but you will need to hold down the PS button just to activate the controller. You won't actually see any indication that the controller has been turned on. You won't get any LEDs or anything like that. But that has actually turned it on. So just hit OK there. And it'll just download some more stuff that will help you to configure the controller. Eventually you'll see the following prompt and that's pretty much it. You can just hit OK and you'll go back to the setup menu. So now what we want to do is we want to cancel out of that. Cancel out of that again and go back to the command prompt. And now we want to start emulation station again. So we go emulation station. So now we're just going to scroll along to uh, the configure input menu. You just see it here, input configuration, you just press start. And you just make a couple of changes here, so it's pretty much do exactly as it asks you to do. You just press a button on the device for player one. Uh, I'm gonna skip player two here at the minute. You just see we're configuring a couple of the buttons here. Not too much to see really. Just telling you which button I want to go where. You can see it kind of makes suggestions for you there as well, kind of highlights which buttons it thinks would be best or whatever you're trying to configure. That's pretty much it. Now, I had a bit of an issue here. For some reason it said uh, the button for up wasn't valid, so instead of using the digital pad, I used the analog sticks instead. That's why you see it coming up as an axis instead of a button. You just hit save, and then you're done. And I'm gonna cut ahead now to, you'll just see an example of me playing Cave Story with the DualShock 3 controller. Uh, very badly, I might add. I, I have a, I don't have that much experience with it yet, so I don't even know what the controls are. But you can see it working here. There's no cable coming out of the DualShock. So onto the next controller, we're going to configure the Xbox controller. So the first thing for us to do is to download the actual driver. So the command, as you can see here, is sudo apt-get install Xbox DRV. That'll take a little bit of time to download and install. When that's done, there's one more thing that we need to do. We just need to do sudo again, and then Xbox DRV hyphen capital D I zero hyphen hyphen next hyphen controller hyphen I space one hyphen hyphen next hyphen controller hyphen I space two space hyphen hyphen next hyphen controller space hyphen I space three space hyphen hyphen dead zone space 4000 space hyphen hyphen dbus space disabled and that basically gets the xbox controller connected and up and running as player one as you can see here that's pretty much all you need to do to get the xbox 360 controller up and running and then you just need to configure the controller as you've seen earlier now we're going to skip ahead to configuring the wii controller which is a lot more involved than that so we're going back to the bash screen as you can see here and we need to download uh, the python hyphen cwiid program so it's sudo apt hyphen get install python hyphen cwiid this is basically the uh, the Wii driver for linux 
When that's finished downloading, then we need to do sudo apt get install wm input. And this downloads another program that helps us to translate the inputs on the controller so that they can actually be readable on the Raspberry Pi. Now the sequence is a little bit shortened here. It will take quite some time on your Raspberry Pi. Um, this took at least 30 seconds and 30 to 40 seconds on mine anyway to actually download and install. So now we need to create a text file using nano. So it's nano space forward slash etc forward slash udev forward slash rules dot d forward slash wemote dot rules. And don't forget to do it as sudo like I forgot to do it just there. <laughs> So basically, we're just going to type in all caps kernel equals equals u input in kind of quotation marks and then a comma space mode in capitals colon equals 0666 in quotation marks. That will basically tell the kernel to load the uh, u input driver when it starts up the Raspberry Pi. Now we're going to use the HCI tool scan command to scan for Bluetooth devices. You can see here it's picking up the Wii controller as the Nintendo RVL CNT-01. You will need to make a note of your Wiimote's MAC address because we will need it later, so write it down or copy and paste it somewhere. So we need to create another text file now as sudo, so we do sudo nano forward slash home forward slash pi forward slash my wm input and we're going to paste in this line of text here now you might want to pause the screen at this point so that you can copy down the text for use in your own raspberry pi and then we're going to do Control x and then press y so that we quit out of it and save then just press enter and it will save the actual text file now we're going to do something similar again we're going to make a directory this time so we're going to do mkdir space forward slash home forward slash pi forward slash bin that's going to make a new directory for us and then we're going to go nano forward slash home forward slash pi forward slash bin so that we can go into the uh, the directory that we just created and we're going to create a file called attach sh basically what we're doing with this file is we're telling the retro pi to look for and connect to the Wii controller just after it loads up emulation station and if you have a look at the code here you'll realize that it's actually using the mac address that we noted down previously i'm going to leave this on your screen for just another couple of seconds just so that you can write it down yourself in order to use it when you're setting up your own wiimote on retropie we now need to tell the operating system that that text file can be used as an executable program and in order to do that we're going to uh, do a chmod command so it's chmod 775 forward slash home forward slash pi forward slash bin forward slash attach we dot sh and if you just press enter on that then as i said that will tell the operating system that this file is executable and i'm going to leave that on your screen there for another second or two just so that you can make a note of it so the final thing that we need to do is we need to add a line into the profile of the system so that our script gets called when the system boots up so in order to do that we're going to do sudo space nano space forward slash etc forward slash profile we're going to scroll right down to the bottom of the file and just before the the last line that mentions ssh connection we're going to paste in forward slash home forward slash pi forward slash bin forward slash attach we dot sh we're going to press Control x and then y and enter so that the file gets saved and then we just need to do sudo reboot and then we will reboot the system and you'll be pretty much good to go then to use your Wii controller. As soon as RetroPie is finished booting and you can see emulation station, you can press the one and two buttons on your controller and that will then sync up to the system. Now you can see here that I'm scrolling along and we're gonna play a bit of Sonic and Knuckles just so that I can show you my terrible Sonic skills <laughs> and also the fact that it is actually working and I'm able to use the Wii Remote in order to play Sonic and Knuckles on the Retro Pi. And that's pretty much all you need to know, guys.
Guys, thanks for checking out today's video. I uh, hope you've learned a lot from this series and uh, I hope you get a lot out of your retro pie. And in the next episode, we'll be learning how to build your very own media center. But for now, you can get playing your games. Um, you'll have a new retro pie set up on your Raspberry Pi and it's great to play with friends. Um, although, if you don't have any friends, you may want to clone yourself like this. Hey. Hey. How are you? I'm good. You're a very good looking man. <laughs> Why, thank you. So are you? <laughs> okay, let's play some Sonic. I'm gonna kick your ass. Mm hmm. Hey guys, just to let you know that I've launched a brand new website, it's called MrVestTech.com. You can click on the link down there and it'll take you straight to the website. It's uh, it's more of a blog at this stage, but it will kind of expand the website at some point. It will include more videos and uh, contact us forms, and requests, forums, all of that kind of thing. Um, you can follow me here on Facebook, on Twitter, on Google+. Plus. Uh, you can check out our Facebook group here. And if you really, if you would, I would really much appreciate if you could click the subscribe button here. If you've learned anything, or if you've enjoyed today's video, please also click the like button, which is down there. I hope you enjoyed the video. The next video is coming out soon. We will learn how to build our very own your Raspberry Pi powered home entertainment systems. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll check you next time.